Hey, good morning, everyone. So, after a short break, we're back again, learning the 138 openings of wisdom of the Holy Ramchal. Hashem should help us to connect to the Holy Tzaddikim. Amen. Moshe Chaim, the Tzato, and then Torah to elevate the sparks that need elevating in this holy city of Tzfat. And uh, bring Mashiach, the Karov. Amen. So today we're starting a new interesting subject, um, which is really uh, the beginning of the, the meat, you could say. Mm. Until now we spoke more about uh, general ideas, which is really the Ramchal's introduction to Kabbalah. But today we're going to start in Yan HaSefirot, the f- opening number five. Exciting. Yeah, but Rosh Hashem, we'll see what, how much we can understand. <laughs> it's very, uh, very deep stuff. So just a short introduction. I'm assuming anyone watching or listening uh, knows a little bit about the Sefirot. But uh, we'll just give a short introduction. Whereas we know the Sefirot are most typically uh, known as the shape of a human a human form, which has a head and a, and a body with hands, as the Patach right? The, the section of the Tikkun Ezar, which uh, if you're Sephardi, you say twice a day or more. Um, which describes all the sefirot in the in the head. So you have the keter, is the skull, and then the right brain is the chachma, left brain is the bina, and then you have the the six um, emotive sefirot, which are in the body, around the heart, and the hands, and then which is chesed gvortefer netzach hadisod, and then the malchut is the feminine. Um, so generally speaking. Generally speaking, um, this is this is this the sefirot can be understood in in any single way really because the sefirot is kind of the building blocks of all of reality. So the sefirot can be understood in in terms of a human being's function, right? As we as we as the example of the of the kunizar. So a person has a head, and he has uh, emotions, and then the ability to act. And it's, it's specifically in that order, right? We, we would, ideally, a person only does what he feels passionate about, what he, and wherefore, what does he feel passionate about? What he feels in his head is right and wrong. And, and then the underlying force of everything is the keter, which, which is a subject on its own, but it's, it's basically what includes everything mm-hmm. on, a, on a very general level, and, and, and it's kind of the the beginning and the end at the same time because it's so general and this is something we'll get into at a different time. Um, and really we know obviously that this is also, as we say now, the Sefirot exist in, in the human experience, but they also exist as, as, as really the source of, of all of this exists in the world of Atsilut. Now the world of Atsilut is, is, is really the 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 Chiddush of Kabbalah, because really the concept of the ten Sefirot existing in, in the human being is a very, fairly simple idea if you break down you know, the emotions of a human being and the process of how things come to be. It starts with the Keter and ends with the Malchut, and that's the process. It goes through a ten-step process, and, and, and the concept of numbers being from one to ten, all of these things existing on a, philosoph- a philosophical level and on a practical level, Within the the human experience, is 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 not necessarily the chiddush of Kabbalah. What what Kabbalah is, is is telling me is the concept of the world of Atzilut, which says that there's four worlds, as we know, Atzilut, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, and the Kabbalah separates between the world of Atzilut and the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya, known in, in the Kabbalah in short as Bia. So we're separating the worlds of Atzilut and Bia. Now, the main difference between the worlds from Bria onwards is that it's that, that is the beginning of creation, right? Bria translates as creation. And Yitzira is already when creation takes form, which is the word Yitzira, and Asiya is already where the form takes its final form ready for to be completely revealed, ready to be to be acted upon or acted with. Uh, but Atzilut is, is this is the tricky one. Atzilut is is pre-creation because it's before Bria, but it's obviously 
not the infinite one because we were talking about 10. But then again, is it Hashem? Is it not Hashem? This is something that um, the, all the previous Mukbalim um, really grappled with, how to understand the concept of Atsilat. When we say, when we say there's 10 Sefirot that Hashem himself reveals um, pre-creation as godly <coughs> ways of, of acting. Now, um, the Ramak, Ramosha Kodavera, also lived in Svat, he brings uh, in Pardes, in the Pardes, his, his, his book Pardes Rimonim, he brings the big machloket um, between, he brings a bunch of opinions, the Rakanti and uh, Tzemach David, and a bunch of different names. It's actually also discussed by the Rama, who is known mainly for his halacha uh, um, publication, but he has a book also on Kabbalah. And they all discuss this idea of what are the Sefirot? Are they Hashem himself, Hashem's light? Is like Hashem himself revealing of his light? Or is it a tool, so to speak, how Hashem kind of um, acts with these things to, to, to the creation? Now, and like we said, there's a big difference between the, 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 the Sefirot of the worlds from Bria onwards, which means the world of Bria is already separate from the Creator. The Creator created and, and, and all that exists there is not, is not the Creator, it's, the crea- it's created beings carrying out the will of the Creator. Now, so at Silut, we have to say, is, on, is on, on, on a more, as closer to the Creator, and some actually describe the word at Silut as Etzel, which is nearby or close to. Right? So... So really, according to Ramchal, this question really doesn't isn't such a problem, <coughs> meaning the question of whether the atzilut is is Hashem's light or it's Hashem's um, tools of acting. It's because the Ramchal already told us in opening number one that all of our discussions of, of, of Kabbalah is always going to be not with Hashem himself, with the Creator in His essence, rather with the light that He revealed, with His energy that He His Ratzon. Which that he revealed, and that is also infinite, the infinite force of behind all of creation. So when we say that the sefirot were revealed, then we mean that the infinite light, the infinite energy of Hashem, was revealed as to, in, in ten sefirot in the way we're gonna we're gonna get to in a minute. But that that really takes away once Ramchal has given us that introduction, that takes away the the severity, so to speak. Which, which the Mekubalim uh, had an issue with of talking about Hashem himself revealing himself in ten ways because, like we said, Hashem himself is obviously um, infinite and, and one and never will, you know, we won't, we won't, we're not tracing back the, the concept of ten uh, energies back to the, to the Creator himself. So can I just check, you, you're saying that there's, there's Hashem, then there's the Ensof, Right. And after that is the the Atzilut Bria, right? Atzilut Bria, yeah. Yeah. The end of is a is an expression of of God's light before the pre-creation. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, like we said before, like we spoke about last week in short last time about the Tzimtzum, um, which Ramchal is going to get to in later openings. The Tzimtzum, obviously, Ramchal also believes, doesn't happen in Hashem Himself. It's it's all this infinite light that 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 is revealed, the infinite light that is just everywhere, which doesn't allow for revelation, because infinite doesn't allow for specific things to exist as as individual specific energies, and this this is where this whole process of of symptom or or concealment of the power of this one energy that doesn't allow for for specifics, and and this is all within. Hashem's first he reveals everythingness and then he um, makes a concealment of the everythingness so that then he can reveal um, so this everythingness can now be revealed in a, in a, in, 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 in a process of ten sefirot. Mm-hmm. Now Yeah, so I, I did. I did lots of reading, reading this. This opening, being honest, like it's very, 
very hard to understand exactly what Ramchal is saying, at least in my level of understanding. Um, he seems to be contradicting himself backwards and forwards because the truth is that it's it's actually a very paradoxical discussion because we always want to believe that Hashem is one and infinite and that any type of talking about details or splitting into ten is going to be is going to be a problem. So where does ten begin and where does ten end? Which is really why the non-Kabbalists um, actually had a problem with with Kabbalah. How can you talk about Hashem revealing himself in ten ways. Right. And, and ultimately, that, this, is, this is never really explained on a logical level. It, it remains a paradox of sorts where, where there is a place where, where, where there's a revelation of ten and the source is one. And to figure out exactly how one created ten while it's still in the realm of his, of his oneness... That is really the, the something that needs to be explained. And Ramchal, hopefully, will understand a little bit from going through this from going through this opening. And really, also in the next one, Petach Vav, also goes a little bit more to explain at least Ramchal's opinion in this in this subject. Mm-hmm. So, so let's start here. Petach Hey, Hasfirot. What is the Sfirot? Hem Hearot. It's a light or light rays that were given the ability to be seen or to be perceived contrary as opposed to the Orin Sof the, the first revelation which is not really a revelation because it's not able to be perceived so really the beginning is just an energy force that is, is, is by definition not able to be revealed because this doesn't allow for otherness mm. and revelation is always to otherness mm-hmm. so the sfirot are, are the process where where there, there was a limitation a, a limited light was 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 then expressed from the one light and therefore it is now being able to be perceived because there's already a, a beginning and an end to this light and which is by definition makes it perceivable now this doesn't mean that it's actually perceivable, perceivable, as Ramchal will, will explain in the in the in the explanation. But essentially, it means that the sfirot are the, the the original energy being made receivable and perceivable just by by allowing for the for the for the for the splitting upness of 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 a aspect of the light. And, and Sfirot, really, the word Sfirot is lots of different explanations. Um, the, s- the most simple one, I believe, is is numbers, misbar. Now, once something has a number, it's already it's already split because mm. the oneness, the it's absolute wonderful. oneness, is is just everythingness. Yeah. So once there's a number, you're saying one and two and three and ten. So now we can perceive it at least as 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 points of reference, mm. which which are separate mm. from each mm. other. Finite. Finite, exactly. So the word sfirot also has in it the word sof. So the end sof is revealing a softness uh, from yeah. himself. Right. So let's begin. Hanoseh shall kol The discussion of all of all the discussions in in Kabbalah. Who in your sfirot? So we're just discussing the sfirot. Lachen zema shetzarich levayr atchila. This is what we have to um, elaborate on. First, <coughs> so let's see. Chelik Aleph has firot hem hearot. The sfirot are revelations or uh, lightning rays. So, he, so he's gonna he's gonna elaborate on what this means. Vezek hine has firot he masha he'elukut mit pashet. So the end of is is godliness. Now the godliness is spreading out. It's being it's being it's leaving the source and it's now being expressed outward. So now the question is, why are we calling it light? Now the Ramchal makes, makes sure that we know that it's not light, as in light of, that comes out of a fire source or from type of electricity. It's not light that lights up anything. 
The reason we call it light is because light is the least physical thing. Mm. Um, so much so they say, right, the light is, 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 can be either particles or waves. It's not, it doesn't even have a finite uh, way of, 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 of traveling, or even, right, there's the whole quantum idea. So that's basically saying that it's the, the most simple, least physical word that we can express to, to describe the, the um, giving out of energy, the giving out of, of a, for, a creative force, of an existing um, concept, a concept of, of the most simple existence, let's say. <clears throat> So uh, uh, and he says, So we we really you can't describe godliness. So the sefirot really can't be described. You can't describe the sefirot because it's godliness. But the only we have to use a word to describe it because otherwise we can't talk about it. So we we're giving the the, the closest possible to the to the impossible. And therefore, we have to call it light. Mm. And this is something a lot of Mukhubalim make sure that we know that the light that we perceive as light is obviously nothing to do with the light of the Ensof. It's, it's rather the, it, the, the most in, unacceptable, acceptable word to use for the revelation of Ensof. Mm. Now, this, this comes down to the question of So really we saw in last time in the opening number four that the purpose of creation was so that we can get reward and the reward should be in a way that we receive reward based on our work, on our on our efforts. And the and the actual reward is what the effort actually achieved. So the effort was to become closer to God, and that is the reward itself. Now, essentially, that means that Hashem created us in a human form, and He created the place of reward, meaning the place of reward, which is the closeness where a human being can be close to God, in a way that the human being is able to be close to, to that revelation. So Hashem created a world of Atzilut, which is the world that is godliness, in the, in the human form, meaning that the humans can relate to it and see this process of revelation in a, in a step-by-step way. Meaning Hashem could have created the world without this step. Hashem could have created the world where the infinite creates the world without, without revealing the steps that he used, so to speak, to create the world. Now the steps being the ten sefirot, because the ten sefirot, each sefirah is a step-by-step process. Just like we said before, like a human being would, would create anything. There would be first the concept, the, the, the general idea of it, and then how it breaks down and becomes forward as a more... More, more broken down idea and the plan and then how it's broken down and, and, and brought further into action through these ten steps. Hashem didn't have to use these steps, says Ramchal. But he did use these steps because he wants there to be the... He, he wants the source of reality. He wants his version of how he created the world to be understood and to be, con- to be, be able to be conceptualized by, by the human mind or by the human way of doing things. So that's, this is where Atzilut is really Hashem creating the world. And the concept of how Hashem creates the world is, still, is, is never understood because it's coming from the infinite into creation. Mm. But what he created is this intermediary space where the human mind can, can grasp in, in theory because it's, it's not, it's not the, the, the steps are there. And therefore... The human mind, when the human being was created in this image, a human being can look at himself and see this same concept of, of, of the process of how, 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 how a human being exists and lives, mm-hmm. and then perfect himself to be in that image on a more perfect level or on a more godly level. But it's not like when a person 
wants to think about God, he can he can't think about he can't act like God because there is no there is no revelation of God that is that is compatible with human. So can we check that? So you you you, you have the beginning God, and then you have Ensof, right? Unlimited Ensof, and then you have to have a symptom. Right. To allow the space for Atzilot, Bria, Yitzia, and Asiya to happen. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that correct? Right. And, and so the, the beginning of the Sefirot is after the Tzimtzum in Atzilot. Atzilot is the first expression of the Sefirot? Right, yes. The first, yes, the first expression of the Sefirot as ten Sefirot, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> But, but the, right, so that's the thing. So, so we have the end sof. Now, the end sof, the end sof could have, like we said before, the end sof could have created the world without Sfirot. He could have created the world without getting us to know, to know him or right. to know his ways. But he chose to, 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 for us to have a way to know him. But we're still not really knowing him because he didn't have to do it this way. So, we're not really knowing him, we're knowing him as it relates to us. Mm-hmm. So right, that's the that's the important point that Ramchal points out in in another one of his svarim. I can't remember which one, where he brings an example of a of a very wise man that visited a town, and for whatever reason he didn't want anyone to know of his wisdom, so he acted like a simple person, never expressed his his abilities and his knowledge, mm-hmm. and people started to get to know him mm-hmm. in the, in his simple version. But they didn't know him as he was, so suddenly there's a discussion of like when they when they start discussing like okay so like how much does he know and like how much does he reveal for what he knows? Now all of these discussions are not actually the way he is. It's within, in the context of how he's revealed himself to the people there. Mm-hmm. So that's what Ramchal points out that ultimately the sfirot are not the way Hashem actually is, but he wants to be known through these sfirot, and this is why we can actually connect to him through through these things and he decided in his in his desire to be known that he created this reality which isn't really true but this is the way he, he made he, he he decided in his infinite wisdom that he can be known through this through what what humans can grasp and then he is being known so when we say for example the 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 the, the, the name yudke vavke yudke vavke essentially is the tenth spirit as the as the as the uh, oldest farm explained, the yud is the chokma, he is the bina, vav is the six sfirot, and he is the malchut. So essentially, when we say yud kev avke, we're describing not Hashem himself, because Hashem himself doesn't have a name. We're describing how he is known through his ways, through his through his sfirot. But, if, but Hashem wants to have a name. He wants us to be able to be to to realize that he exists. So he gave us this reality. Uh, and, and and therefore, so it's like it's like when we, it's like we know him, but we don't know him as he is. We know him as he is able to be known by humans, right. and he, and he decided that that actually means we're, we're we're talking to him. So that when we pray and we say, Hashem, you are um, the giver of wisdom. We you are the giver of of of, of health. Creator of the world. The creator of the world. So essentially, that's not who he is. <laughs> it's how he does. He wants to be known to us. Mm. And he chose that this is actually considered knowing him. Mm. This is the closest we can get to knowing him. Right, right. And it's, it's, it's the closest we can get. And he actually kind of invested himself. himself like say, This is really the, the, big, the big discussion, you could say, or the big um, point of contention between like, all of the religions and all of the philosophies of like, how much is Hashem invested himself in these human or limited ways of, of, of revelation, where you have, you know, like the, the, like the Christian version of like God himself coming in a human form, and that's yeah. like, it's like gone too far, and then you have the people that say that God himself is not connected to the world. So this is like a very, very um, deep conceptual idea, which is really the source of how we serve Hashem, which is something that needs to be really understood on a deep level, how the ten Sfirot are are ten, but there's still one. And the, the Zohar calls it the secret of Amuna. how this paradoxical thing is that we are connecting to the one infinite God through these ten ways, which is represented in the Shem, Hashem of Ziyut Kevavke, and we call it his, his actual name, the name of his essence, Shema Etzem. 
So really, we, we consider the Shiyut Kevavke as Hashem Himself, but we obviously know that this is just the name that is an access point to the infinite, which doesn't have a name. Mm-hmm. So this is really where, where the, the Mukubalim say that mm-hmm. when, you, when you pray, you're not praying to Yud Kevavke, but you are praying to Yud Kevavke. You're praying to the, to the, to the one behind, to the, the, the one, the, the energy that is the source of everything, that reveals himself through his ways of Yud Kevavke. So, so essentially, we're, we're, the only thing we can interact with is what we can grasp, but we're not really talking to the Sfirat, obviously. We're talking to the energy that is flowing into the Sfirat. And, and this, this paradox of, 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 of the Sfirat being ten and one is, is makes sense because we're talking about the, the infinite, where, where everything is possible, and his oneness doesn't get affected by the fact that he's interacting with the world. So again, I hope <laughs> some of this makes sense. So let's continue inside a little Can bit. Can I just uh, recheck the, the Yud Kev of K? The Yud was the Ketem? No, the Yud was the Chokhmah. Oh, the Chokhmah. The, the Yud has a point at the top. And the Yud in the Sefer Torah has a, has a little uh, poke at the top. The yeah. Kutzer Shal Yud, so that's, that's the, the, the Ketem. And then the He is the... He is the Bina, the Vav is Chesed Gwotefer and Netzachad Yisrael, which is six. Yeah. And then the he, the second He is the Malchut. So the Bina and the Malchut are both He, which is because they're both female. He, meaning in the concept of Bina being the mother, and He and the Malchut being the, 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 the daughter, mm-hmm. in this concept of, of the step-by-step revelation, where right. you have the, the father, mother, son, daughter, right. and, and conceptually... So, so Ramchal continues. So now that he, he's told us that the, the sfirot or godliness that is being revealed. Now, what does it mean? It's being revealed. He says that the only difference between pre atzilut and post atzilut was that whatever already existed in the infinite light was now decide Hashem. Created. So what was the what was the act of creation? It wasn't act of creation. It was the act of revelation of what already existed. In the ensof, it all exists, but not in a way that's able to be revealed mm-hmm. because it's infinite. <coughs> but now, the step of creating the ten sfirot is the act of revealing. And, and, and by definition, revealing means creating the concept of ten where there's now a, 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 a perceivable difference between the energies. This includes two, two ideas which are, which are included in the fact that it was now revealed. So that doesn't mean that sfirot are always perceivable. Kiesh sfirot elyonot she'enon nirot afilomen elyonim. The Asfirot, for example, the Keter, is mm. still not perceivable, mm. actually, by others, because it's still very um, infinite in a sense. But that, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't made perceivable. It, cha- it didn't change, by, in essence, from the Ensof, which is unperceivable, into the interperceivable Keter. So that means when it's Nitnu when it means it's being made perceivable, but not necessarily being actually perceived. And then he says... So what's the difference between the Ensof and the Sfirot that can't be perceived? It's, it's the, the definition that the Ensof is not, is not in the category of being, being perceived at all. It's just the infinite, infinite light, whereas the Sfirot, all of them, are in the category of the perceivable and, and, and not necessarily actually perceived, but they've changed their qualities. So the Keter is perceivable but cannot be perceived. Right, it's of the perceivable type of light which therefore creates the Chochmah which can be perceived or at least perceived more. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, it's like when you see a person in, in, the, in, the, in the Mashal, when you see a human being, all you could see is their body, right? Until they open their mouth. And then you can see their words and through their mm-hmm. words you can mm-hmm. kind of get an idea of who they are. And then through who they are, you get an idea of really what their underlying motives are and what they're, how they think. But it's very hard to really to get to know 
the real core personality of a person. So that the Keter is kind of like a very deep thing, which really, in a way, nobody even knows their own Keter. Mm. So, so when, we say, when we say that Hashem revealed a Keter, it's because the Keter is going to lead to Chochmah, that's going to lead to Binah, that will eventually be perceived, because ultimately what we really know, what, what's really perceivable is only the, the lower, the seven lower spherot from the, from the emotion, so to speak, downwards. You mean the six midot plus machot? Six midot plus machot, exactly. Yeah, that's why it says that Hashem created the world in seven days, or six days in Shabbat, uh. because that is what's revealed. The, the uh-huh. creation only reveals from the, the midot, because you can, you can never really know what's inside a person's head. Mm. And that's why the 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 chachma bina is is really the 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 olam haba. right? Olam haba is called bina because it's it's not in the realm of this world. Chokhmah and bina are olam haba. Um, yeah, they, they take somehow together. Like uh, it's it's bina is mainly olam haba, but it's also. Uh, Bina always receives its energy from the Chachma because obviously it's it's a it's a feminine uh, concept, so it's a hey. So where would Keter be amongst all of that? So Keter is even even higher than Olam Abba. Keter is higher the source. So when we say, for example, in Gan Eden, there's a the Nahar Yotzei Eden. Yes. So that the Eden is is either the Chachma or the Bina, it depends how how you want to structure it, and the, and the the Gan the Nahar is the is the is the is the is the Bina in general. And that comes down to the Gan, which is the Malchut, uh, where Gan Eden in this world. But the Shefa that's coming down to Gan Eden is, 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 is the Bina, because the Bina is really the source of, of creation. That, the Bina is the one before the, the, Bina is the, is the, is the one before the one before the seven that are revealed. So right. it's kind of, that's the, the last place mm-hmm. where it all comes from. Mm-hmm. So it's like the mother that gives birth to what's, mm-hmm. to what's, what's actually mm-hmm. given birth to. So really what the Ramchal is telling us is that the, the, the Oren Sof includes everything. <coughs> the Oren, Oren Sof includes all of existence, but in a non-revealed way, in a way that it can't be perceived. And the beginning of revelation is actually the beginning of concealment that limits the revelation, that then allows it to be perceived. So the Sfirot are, are, are the, is, is the unperceivable light given qualities of perception, meaning the energy of, of existence being being made being made in a revealed way. So so for example the, the, the example that the that the Sfarim give is like is like the sun that gives off sun rays. Mm-hmm. Now inside the sun core is obviously those rays exist because if they exist outside of it then obviously they exist inside of it. Mm-hmm. But they, 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 so they exist inside the sun core, but they're not there because the sun core is actually taking over. It's, it, it, it exists in, on its own without giving off light. So the beginning of the sun giving off light is at the end of the sun, and the beginning of the place that's not sun, that doesn't have light. So when we say that the sefirot is being revealed to, to outside, it's basically because it's kind of entered a space where there's a, where there's a, 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 a lack of light, and mm. therefore the light is now being a revealed type of light. <coughs> mm-hmm. So the, the next, next, the next opening, we'll finish off this opening next week and mm-hmm. go into the next opening. There he goes into a little bit more how to how do we understand the the concept of sphere of being revealed while it's still being infinite light, and how how the Ramchal believes this is this is possible. Beautiful. It's it's refreshing to finally get. Uh, to the nitty gritty. Yeah, we're just beginning. It's all uh, it's all very uh, abstract. Very good. Um, good. Thank Good. You.